Hello everyone, Wylock here. Welcome back. Thanks to all of you who submitted ideas following episode 115 with our modular catwalks. If you're new here, go check out that episode first and then come back. Anyway, I got over 90 unique ideas to go through. Obviously that's not going to fit in one video like I thought. So there will be a series of follow-up videos I can do over time. I think I have enough here ready for this first episode, so I thought I would get it out on YouTube so you could enjoy it. Anyway, here's a rapid-fire series of miniature little projects you can do to expand and enhance your modular catwalk system. I need to start out by quickly addressing a design flaw, and it is this scenario here. At an intersection, there isn't room for two fences at a corner. The solution is inelegant, but by my estimation, this only appears a handful of times in a fully set up complex, so I think making eight of the following short fences will be a good enough band-aid. So just as in 115, you rip quarter inch wide strips of chipboard, and you make the fence in exactly the same way as before, except instead of the strips being three inches wide, they're only two and three quarter of an inch wide, so you leave off a quarter inch. And the clamp, instead of it being two inches wide, is one inch wide, still centered. This will allow it enough play to be biased left or right as needed in those corner scenarios. So what about this situation? It's not common, but if you want to connect two tabbed ends together or two slotted ends together, it's helpful to have some adapters ready. So, a male adapter is simply a two by half inch rectangle of chipboard with the corners clipped per usual. Done. For the female adapter, cut two rectangles that are 3 quarter inch by 3 inch, and then two more that are 3 quarter inch by half inch. Glue the small ones on the ends as you see here, and then complete the sandwich with the other large one. Now you might be wondering, the tabs are only a quarter inch deep, shouldn't this adapter therefore only be twice that, or half inch wide? Yeah, that is true. But with manufacturing error, maybe one of your tabs is slightly big, whatever, this accounts for that. And here's one of those inserts being used, you can see still plenty strong enough. Now let's build a hexagon platform. Again, we want our edges to be in multiples of 3 inch, so let's just start with that. Set your compass to a 3 inch radius and draw it out on the chipboard. Make sure you keep the compass set exactly as is. Now to draw a perfect hexagon, Plant the compass anywhere along the circle and draw a small arc intersecting it, like you see me doing here. It's easier shown than described. Move the needle to that intersection and do it again. Do this all the way around and then use a ruler to connect all six intersections like this. And go ahead and cut it out and that's how you do a hexagon. This right here is the bottom of the three layers. The approach from here is identical to what we did back in 115. You white glue on a quarter inch wide frame, leaving two inch gaps centered in each side. Paint the inside black, and then insert your cross stitch mesh, which you've already spray primed black. Then attach the top layer, which is another normal hexagon, but with some portions removed, leaving a half inch wide frame. So to make this top layer, you draw out the hexagon as we just discussed, then connect each opposing vertex with a line, giving you three lines. And then on each side of those, draw another, which is offset by a quarter inch. Then you just go around the perimeter, drawing lines a half inch in from the edge. Cut out those sections with a fresh knife and ruler. Here it is put together. For a bigger platform, the approach is identical. Just remember, however long you want the sides to be, that's what you set your compass to. Remember that one rule and you're good to go. Paint these up to match the rest of your walkways. All right, moving on, let's make a balcony. As usual, a three layer sandwich like all our walkways. The bottom layer is this shape. It's just six inches on one side, three inches on the other and diagonals connecting them. The middle layer, once again, is where you have your two inch tabs and or slots. And in this case, we have both. The six inch side will have two tabs and the three inch side will have one slot. Also note that the two diagonal sides have slots as well, but be careful you center them because those diagonals are not three inches long. They're a little bit longer. Finish up as usual, cut that pre-primed plastic canvas mesh to fit, paint black, insert it, and glue on the top frame layer. Here it is assembled, and once again painted up just like your walkways. 
Now this piece has a couple of uses. Here's the first, what I made it for as a balcony. It just protrudes off an existing walkway, and you use the three inch slot to put a support in to hold it up. But also, and I should have realized this as I was making it, the angle matches that of the hexagon. So here's a 12 inch hex I made, sort of a landing pad. And this balcony piece fits perfectly on there to extend it. You can imagine three of these put on every other side would make an awesome looking deck. And then of course this could just serve as a stylish intersection. Instead of a support, just insert another walkway. Oh, how about a banner? I made a template you can download below in the video description. Print it up and you draw whatever you want on it. I have no artistic ability so I used Google Image Search and Photoshop to put together this AdMech banner. By the way, the template assumes my soup can's height, so if yours was different, simply chop off each of the two short ends of the template by however much you need to. Kebab skewer. Chop a three inch length and paint it up gunmetal or dark brown or something like that, whatever you like. And we're gonna wrap the banner around it. So apply a glue stick to the back of the banner and wrap it around and carefully line it up so that the banner itself is now double thick paper. With the glue still damp in there, cut away some bits like it's tattered. A couple nicks on the sides and really torn up at the bottom. Then crunch up and crinkle the banner a little bit. And then if you have Agrax Earthshade or other dark washes, you can use them here. I actually just took some acrylic craft paint, brown and black, and watered them way down into washes. And I don't really know what I'm aiming for here, just kind of going back and forth, mixing it up, feeling it. Maybe going back to the water jar to thin it out and smear things around. Just mixing it up to get two shades of grime on the banner. We're gonna give that a few hours to totally dry. It might be really mushy and soggy right now, but it will crisp up very nicely once everything dries. The mounting piece to hang it, very simple, just a rectangle of chipboard and then hot glue on some decorative hooks like from jewelry or you could even bend paper clips, whatever. And then you pop each end of the bar in there and use that empty lower half of a fence clamp to hang it underneath any walkway. Ladders. I'm gonna show you two methods because I realize not all of you might have access to this secret ingredient, a hair curler. This is from Dollar Tree, they're like eight in a pack for a buck or something like that. So unclip this outer shell part thing and then just gonna hold on to that for a moment. The inner part has these like rows and I'm gonna cut them out. I laid two of them end to end and chopped off excess so that there's only two inches of each remaining. My overall ladder height is gonna be four inches. Yours might be a little different if your original soup cans weren't the same as mine. Then just a small bit of chipboard or cardstock or something to act as a patch and hot glue and weld these two ends together. Okay, now kebab skewers. Measure out four inches and chop. Gonna need two of those. And back to that original shell from the hair curler, a thin bead of hot glue and attach a skewer such that there's a quarter inch sticking out on one end. Like this, here's both of them attached. Then I measured how far apart the skewers are. You can see the ruler here. I'm gonna round up to one and a quarter inch. So from chipboard, I cut four strips, one and a quarter inch long and a quarter inch wide. Lay a bead of hot glue on one of them and set the end of the ladder in the middle and the other assembly straddling it like this. Another bead of hot glue over those and a second strip on to complete the sandwich. Then you go and do the exact same thing on the other end, ladder and skewers and hot glue sandwich between chipboard. Lastly, we need the tab, so again, one and a quarter inch long and a half inch wide. Nip the corners as usual. And notice there's a nice channel here with lots of surface area in there, that's by design. Fill it with hot glue and stick on the tab. Don't fiddle with it, let it totally cool and you'll have a wicked strong connection right there.
At this point, take it outside and prime it black. From here, you just paint it up to match your other features. Remember, we were focusing on just a few colors. So overbrush the entire thing with gunmetal. Maybe the upper and lower ties are gray or whatever to match your walkways. A few random hits with copper, you get the idea. Paint it to match the rest of your set, whatever motif you've been doing. Now, if you don't have access to those hair curlers or don't want to use them, here's the toned down version. Chop the two vertical rails as normal, so four inch kebab skewers, and then sandwich both ends with chipboard, just as we did a minute ago. Small difference here is that you can actually make the ladder however wide you want since you're not constrained by the size of that hair curler shell piece. And again, attach the tab to one end, just like before, and now simply glue on some rungs. You could use more kebab skewer or popsicle sticks or something like these flat picks. Since it's wood on wood and there's nothing to hide the connection point, you might want to use white glue instead of hot glue. Gonna have to wait a little while for dry time, but it'll look better. So here it is with two rungs on it, for example, you got it from here. I'm not going to finish this piece because I already made four of the other kind. There's a quick look at two of them. Again, at the end of this video, we're going to show a big setup with everything in context. I got to thinking, what goodies are in my electronics supply box? There's got to be something cool looking in here. Uh, yep, the fuses from episode 99, when we did the ADMAC objective markers. So I took a few of those, and then a colored sharpie, tinted the glass with it. After a few minutes, that'll be permanent, no need to seal or varnish or anything. Then I built a simple mounting plate. It's a one inch square of chipboard, and then two small bits to form the clip itself a quarter inch by half inch, and a half inch square. This is easier to just show than describe. White glue on as usual, and attach them to the back to make a clip. Then I painted it black. Again, chipboard still takes glue very well after a coat of matte acrylic paint. Some tiny dabs of hot glue to secure these metal ends of the fuses to the plate, and then overbrush the remaining areas with gunmetal as per usual to match the rest of your collection. So it just clips onto a railing like this, dead simple. There's probably still a lot of untapped potential with these fuses. I'm sure, actually I hope that one of you will outdo me. And we're about to go to the table to see the final product, but real quick, some reminders. If you like what you're about to see, please don't hesitate to hit that like button, subscribe, reminders, etc., etc. There is a link in the description below for my Amazon storefront, easy, free way to support the channel if you want, just buy your stuff through that link. And for all you 3D printers out there, Wylox Crafting Goods is sponsored by Heroes Horde, which has an excellent range of high quality models, including but not limited to all True Tiles lines, which are open lot compatible. Also, check out my modules over on the DMs Guild, and remember, $3 patrons get free copies of all my releases. Now stick around, because in a moment I'm going to show you all this with models in context, but first I thought I'd show just the terrain. So this complex I built with uh, every piece in my collection for these walkways from episode 115. Take a look at the end of this walkway. It's got a wall support section just dead-ending it. That's possible with that new adapter piece that we made. Just one possible use there. Again, I got 90 unique ideas to get through, so if yours didn't show up in this episode, give it time. I'm going to wheel over here to a different part of the complex, look at one of the hex pads that we made. Yep, and then next to it is the balcony. And let's pan over to the other side of the complex. Here's a triple high tower with two ladders. POV kind of gives me vertigo. And then the large landing pad, the 12 inch hex. Now I'm going to load this up with Ultramarines and Necrons and just get out of the way. I'll turn the music up and let you enjoy. Remember all this terrain we've made in previous episodes, so I'll put links in the video description if you're interested in those. Enjoy!
By the way, all this is on a frontline gaming mat. That's the Wylox Armory brand of choice. If you liked this particular project, here's two more that you should go check out right now. Also, enjoy this community showcase. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell reminder icon. I am Wylock, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.